Welcome to Cracked. Our focus, the dollar is strong. That is good for the US, but bad for the world. Let's check this out. The Federal Reserve may have little choice but to combat inflation relentlessly, but both wealthy and impoverished nations are suffering from the pain of falling exchange rates. The Federal Reserve's commitment to combat domestic inflation by raising interest rates is wreaking havoc on other nations by driving up prices, expanding the size of debt payments, and boosting the possibility of a protracted recession. These interest rate increases are destabilizing the economies of both rich and poor countries by driving up the value of the dollar, which serves as the standard currency for most international trade and transactions. The dollar's acceleration is contributing to stinging inflation in Britain and most of the rest of Europe. The British pound hit a record low against the dollar on Monday as markets reacted negatively to the government's proposed tax cut and spending plan. The yuan was set in China, which strictly manages its currency, at its lowest point in the previous two years, while measures were taken to stem its collapse. The high dollar is driving up the cost of imported food, gasoline and medicine in Nigeria and Somalia where there is already a risk of hunger. The high dollar is threatening to deter foreign investment in developing economies like India and South Korea and is pushing debt-ridden Argentina, Egypt, and Kenya closer to default. Professor of economics at Cornell University and author of several books on currencies, Eswar Prasad remarked, for the rest of the world, it's a no-win situation. However, he added, the Fed must move swiftly to combat inflation because any delay in action could make things potentially even worse. Washington's policy decisions frequently have a big impact. With the biggest economy in the world and large oil and natural gas reserves, the United States is a superpower. However, its impact on world trade and finance is significant. This is due to the fact that the dollar serves as the world's reserve currency and is the one that is most frequently used to price goods and settle accounts by international organizations and financial institutions, regardless of location. When purchased and sold on the global market, energy and food are frequently priced in dollars, and most of the debt owed by developing countries is as well. Whether or whether the United States is involved, almost 40% of all transactions worldwide include dollars, according to a research conducted by the International Monetary Fund. And right now, the dollar has risen to a level unseen in many years when measured against other important currencies like the Japanese yen. This is due to the fact that the dollar serves as the world's reserve currency and is the one that is most frequently used to price goods and settle accounts by international organizations and financial institutions, regardless of location. When purchased and sold on the global market, energy and food are frequently priced in dollars, and most of the debt owed by developing countries is as well. Whether or whether the United States is involved, almost 40% of all transactions worldwide include dollars, according to a research conducted by the International Monetary Fund. And right now, the dollar has risen to a level unseen in many years when measured against other important currencies like the Japanese yen. Because higher returns are guaranteed by rising interest rates, investors are drawn to the dollar even more. As a result, they are investing less in emerging markets, further taxing the economies of those countries. For nations that might otherwise be able to benefit from a depreciated currency to export more of their own commodities that have become cheaper, the unique confluence of events, which has resulted in weaker global demand, is making matters even worse. Because higher returns are guaranteed by rising interest rates, investors are drawn to the dollar even more. As a result, they are investing less in emerging markets, further taxing the economies of those countries. For nations that might otherwise be able to benefit from a depreciated currency to export more of their own commodities that have become cheaper, the unique confluence of events, which has resulted in weaker global demand, is making matters even worse. Mortgages The 30-year fixed mortgage rate tracks the yield on the 10-year Treasury bond, which is impacted by inflation, and how investors anticipate the Federal Reserve will respond to rising prices, rather than moving in lockstep with the Federal Funds rate. Meanwhile, adjustable rate mortgages and home equity lines of credit are more closely linked to the Fed's action. According to Mr. Prasad, a weak currency might occasionally act as a buffering mechanism, causing countries to import less and export more. Today, however, a lot of people are not seeing the benefits of stronger growth. They still have to pay more for imports of necessities like wheat, oil, and medicines, in addition to loan payments on multi-billion dollar loans. A year ago, $100 in oil or $100 debt payment would have cost 1,572 Egyptian pounds, 
117,655 Korean won, or 41,244 Nigerian naira. Assume there was no inflation or price growth. That same $100 payment now costs 1,950 Egyptian pounds, 143,158 won, and 43,650 naira due solely to the strengthening dollar. Meanwhile, American customers are saving money. A 12 pounds tin of British tea cost $16.44 last year and costs $13.03 now. Belgian chocolates costing 50 euros are now only $48.32 instead of $58.50. Cheaper imports are assisting in reducing inflation in the United States. According to Jason Furman, a Harvard economics professor and former chief economic advisor in the Obama administration, I can't remember the last time when the issue was that a strong dollar was a way the United States was exporting inflation, extinguishing some of its own, but by adding more of it around the world. The impact on those who are most vulnerable is greatest. Poor nations frequently have little alternative but to repay debts in dollars, regardless of the exchange rate at the time the money was first borrowed. The devastating Latin American debt crisis of the 1980s was brought on by spiraling U.S. interest rates. According to Jason Furman, a Harvard economics professor and former chief economic advisor in the Obama administration, I can't remember the last time when the issue was that a strong dollar was a way the United States was exporting inflation, extinguishing some of its own, but by adding more of it around the world. The impact on those who are most vulnerable is greatest. Port nations frequently have little alternative but to repay debts in dollars, regardless of the exchange rate at the time the money was first borrowed. The devastating Latin American debt crisis of the 1980s was brought on by spiraling U.S. interest rates. Maria Sierra da Silva resides in the impoverished hillside area of Rochina with her daughter and granddaughter in a 160-square-foot flat. You go to the grocery store, you buy something at a price today, she remarked, but the next day it costs more. It's been difficult. Over the past 10 years, private businesses in developing nations like Korea, Brazil, and Indonesia have also borrowed significant sums of money attracted by what appeared to be consistently low interest rates. According to recent study on the effects of a high dollar on developing countries, economic growth is generally slowed down. Professor of Economics at the University of California, Berkeley, and research author Maurice Obstfeld said, you can see these very pronounced negative effects of a stronger dollar. The pile on effect follows. To support their currencies and stop import prices from soaring, central banks are under pressure to boost interest rates even in nations with lower rates of inflation. Several countries raised interest rates last week, including Argentina, the Philippines, Brazil, Indonesia, South Africa, the United Arab Emirates, Sweden, Switzerland, Saudi Arabia, the United Kingdom, and Norway. Despite the harm that a strong dollar is doing, most economists believe that if the Fed were to fail to stop inflation in the United States, the result would be worse for the world. In addition, there are worries that central bankers would act prematurely due to the global trend of rising interest rates. This month, the World Bank issued a warning, stating that concurrent increases in interest rates are driving the global economy toward recession and developing countries toward a series of financial crises that would cause lasting harm. Although it is clear that the Fed's main duty is to manage the American economy, some economists and foreign policy decision-makers argue that the Fed ought to also take other nations' economies into account when making decisions. Alan Greenspan, the economist who oversaw the Federal Reserve for five terms, said in 1998 that it is just not credible that the United States can remain an oasis of prosperity unaffected by a world that is experiencing greatly increased stress. Although the American economy is currently contracting, the underlying issue is still present. According to Mr. Obstfeld, a UC Berkeley economist, central banks have strictly domestic mandates, but financial and trade globalization have rendered economies more intertwined than they have ever been, thus closer coordination is needed. I don't believe central banks can afford to ignore what's happening abroad. Most economists contend that the globe would be worse off if the Federal Reserve did not take action since US inflation is still high. Most economists contend that the globe would be worse off if the Federal Reserve did not take action since U.S. inflation is still high. That's where we wrap things up for now.